Hello, good morning everyone and welcome to Wallaf Safari from Jim Again Reserve in South Africa. And my name is Patrick. I'll be guiding and presenting this morning. Um, Sebastian is behind the camera and uh, cracking final control. Very overcast morning in Jim Again Reserve and uh, we had some rain about two hours ago. It was um, raining quite hard and especially in the, in the northern part of the concession this morning and uh, and the Craig and I couldn't see properly on, um, on our way in from, from Gowrie Gate because it's, uh, it was uh, raining quite hard. So it seems to be going now. So we're just going to drive around and see what we can find for you. And um, just to keep everyone updated uh, what, um, on what happened uh, for the last half an hour, there was a Lions audio. Um, just up in the north and, and there sounded like they were pretty much um, around uh, um, the concession and there was also uh, some high activities on the giraffe kaka so we're going to make our way down there and see what we can find. So please join us and enjoy the game live. Let's go ahead and have a look around. Very strong smell of elephant dung there. Yeah. Must have been around quarantine last night. Stations. Andrew, Andrew, come in. That's your mobile.
looking for track shift or anything down the road here. There's a couple of hiding tracks going south towards Chilapan. Spitting over here. The clouds are quite low. But it seems to be clearing up in the southeastern part of the, of the reserve. And uh, it looks like it's all raining towards the mountains. I believe that you saw some cheetahs yesterday morning and afternoon. There's three subadult cheetahs apparently. So we don't often see cheetahs in this part of uh, the Sabi Sands. Because the bush is very thick, it's, it's not an ideal habitat um, of the cheetahs. Lines that haven't been around in this part of the world lately, and that's probably why the cheetahs and came through this side. So there might be some lions activities up in the north. And the cheetahs and Often um, I avoid the confrontations with the large predators like lions, lepids and hyenas. Vultures are still around, yeah. Around Chalapan and the giraffe cockers. There 
I sold be a quite a bit of a meat left on the carcass and then they're waiting for the hyenas to expose the meat for them. There's a nut capable of uh, tearing the skin open, especially giraffe skin and buffalo skin is very, very tough. So the, the vultures uh, locate the carcass and they will circle around within the area just to attract the hyenas and the other predators to to come in and uh, and open up the carcass for them. There's one vulture that is capable of uh, of tearing the uh, the carcass open, the leopard first vultures, which which is very very seldom seen in in most areas. that it usually arrive very, very late in at the carcasses. Yes, it, it is known to fly the highest than the other vultures. That's why it, arrives late at the carcasses. It's a very, very massive, massive vulture and it. it's about three times larger than a, a white-backed vulture that we often see uh, uh, within the Cyber Seine in the Great Acrocritical Park. Very, very common. Vultures there. Widely distributed throughout the park. The white backs and hooded vultures. Carcass must be terribly stinking now, yeah. It's about three days or four days old. Yeah? It has been extremely hot for the for the last two days. white-backed vultures sitting with the wings widely open. So he's drying his wings uh, up. from the uh, warmth of the sun. So we had some rain this morning, so they, they are obviously uh, nice and wet. It sounds like there's some vultures that are busy feeding on the carcass there. They can uh, can hear them complaining and at each other, and possibly fighting over a, a chunk of meat. Just 
Look at his wingspan. See that white page or stripe on his back. That's why it's called a white-backed vulture because of that white uh, stripe or patch on their backs. And you can hardly see that white stripe when they are sitting. On the ground or even the trees. Uh, it's, it's, it's often invisible unless it, uh, it, it opens its, its wings and expose it. Okay, let's go and see the rest of the vultures uh, feeding on their carcass. sitting on top of the carcass and, and, and they're taking off now. That quickly take a look at the uh, barn of vultures sitting in a dead tree there. So they're very, very well spread out, sitting in the different trees, and, and some of the wings open, and some busy cleaning themselves. Because if, if they are feeding on the large carcass like a giraffes or a buffalo, or rhino or an elephant, the, um, they tend to uh, dig themselves into the carcass and uh, obviously uh, pick up lots of beds, pieces of meat and bones. So when they're sitting and after a decent meal and then they, uh, and they tend to uh, uh, to clean themselves. And in the hot days, and they, they tend to uh, to go to the water holes and uh, and take a bath. Layla, good morning to you and welcome on, on board and Layla is asking if I've seen the, the vultures and the um, hippo carcass. I 
I can't recall uh, if I have seen uh, the vultures on the uh, hippo's carcass. Where was it, Leila? And uh, when uh, did it occur? Hyenas are gone. Eh? No, I'm not gonna stay here for longer than a minute. Okay. Oh, the smell. It's terrible. Vultures and hyenas, lions, leopards. Don't, don't mind them eating a, a rotten carcasses. Even if it's full of maggots, and they will still eat it. I've seen them, lions and leopards and hyenas and feeding on the rotten carcasses so, with lots of maggots on it. Just gonna do a uh, Nyala Road South up to uh, Central Road and Hyena Road. And see if you can pick up any sign of the lines that were pulling in the north this morning. As far as the information is concerned, they were 
calling around Walsh's, not sorry, uh, Hyena Road. Um, Hyena Road, close to a Belsk Gauri cut line at area. If you don't find tracks on uh, Hyena Road or Belvisuk cut line, they may have been uh, inside Belvisuk then. Because the lines raw, uh, it does travel uh, quite a, a long distance. Especially when the ground is wet, the sun will carry for over and over uh, miles and miles away. may have been the Linkohumas that they're calling this morning, yeah. That is the the resident lines in, in Belsuk. They do move as far south as uh, Western Gaara or Juma. And uh, all the Manchenga lines also come up into this area. in the numerous occasions that they don't 
today in this part of the world uh, for long enough. Don't often uh, roll when they are around here. It's generally, the line wouldn't vocalize when it's uh, within the other male lines in the tree or home ranges, unless if it's ready to. Uh, confront with the territorial holders and uh, and, and uh, is willing to take over the territory but other, other than that man they generally stay silent Anyone too high in the road heading north towards the Gulf of Gari Cutline? Hmm. But when lions are in the territory, spider. They often call and roll just to advertise the presence in the territory and uh, obviously to uh, to keep the other male lines and out of the territory. Oh yeah, good morning to you. Um, Joanne wants to know who's the word Juma? Do you pronounce it with the letter D? And uh, what does it mean? Yeah, very much so, Jen. You pronounce it with the letter D. Juma. D J U M A. Juma. And uh, it means. the place where the lands roam. Place where the lions roam. It's actually a Shangon word, Juma. And the other meaning of the word Juma. Now 
when the lion is stalking a, pre um, a prey, or a leopard stalking a prey, that's what uh, Juma also means. So there's the two different meanings. In Shangan. Bouncing off here. Bouncing around. On hyena roads. I think we shall change the name hyena roads to uh, get lama shocks. Shocks means uh, damaging the suspension or finishing the suspension or and the shock observers. It's a road in the, in the timber water reserve uh, called Ketlama Shocks. condition of this road, Hyena Road, is a lot more better than the Ketlama Shocks in the Timber Water Reserve and it's, oh, it's very, very bad. It's a terrible road that I've ever driven in my life. And the vehicle goes around like that in the 45 degrees angle and it's just bouncing all around. It's not a very comfortable road at all. Especially in the raining season. Roads like this are very good in, in one thing. They keep uh, the driver and the guest and the camera person awake. And I said, That track so far. I'm just gonna do the fire breaking. The ground is uh, much softer than the hyena road, and you can hardly see the tracks on, on that compacted. Black soil. Go the car ahead of us.
So she's very vigilant, yeah. She may have uh, heard uh, the lions roaring early this morning. Perhaps they were fed it close to her. There you go. She's walking and stopping and listening to something. That is typical could his behavior just to walk for a short distance and stop and listen and also switch the ears around into different direction to try and detect the danger. Especially when they are moving through the thick bushes or approaching the dense vegetation. So before they move in into the um, dense area and they'll stop and listen and move the ears around to detect any danger that may be around in the vicinity. Good is it to our right? It's more females. This one at the back, it looks pregnant, yeah. Good as I one of the uh, species that have no fixed breeding season. They, they also breed up all year round. Very aggressive animals. Eh? In excellent conditions. Let's look at the stripes. This also have a white strap across the back. Looking at something again that side, so there might be another another antelope or a kudu uh, coming through. Or there may be something moving through in that area. I don't think it it is something serious and it if it was something serious and then she will have uh, 
giving an, an alarm call. Oh, you know what it is? Elephants behind us. Wonderful. Thanks, Kudu, for, <laughs> for finding the elephants for us. Elephants right behind us. The kid did not look in that direction, we will not have seen these elephants. Morning, madam. One, two, three, four, five elephants. Look at the baby elephant. It's tiny and hairy. Hello, girl. <laughs> He's trying to intimidate us slightly. They're moving off into the thick bushes now and we won't be able to uh, catch up with them unless if they stop and, and start feeding on something. Oh, here they are. Here they are. It's going to go a little bit forward. Then move away, big girl. You can sneak through there, Seb. There's a little gap there. I might have a better visual of them.
Look at the little baby elephants nibbling on the fresh green grass there and trying to sniff us at the same time with the trunk up. Very cute, yeah. And since the, the, the marilla fruits have been in season and we see elephants virtually every single day. Uh, look at that young female said it's pushing the tree down. Wow. Yeah, she's sticking up the roots now. Oh, throwing sand on her body. Uh, look at the little baby. Uh. Baby is getting curious and, and inquisitive towards us.
Steve, good morning to you. And Steve wants to know if I know the, the gender of the baby elephant. Calf. It looks like a boy to me, Steve. I mean, just looking at the shape of his head. And again, it's behavior to, towards us. And as I said, it's, it's, it's quite in, in, in curious and inquisitive towards us because bulls tend to be... Uh, um, to be more curious and inquisitive towards the vehicle than females. And his head is it's nice and round, it's not flat and square. Um, as females heads tend to be. It was just uh, quite difficult to, uh, uh, to, to suck the, uh, uh, the baby uh, elephant or any, any baby, it's, it's, it's difficult to suck it. This is the young female that was uh, raving us earlier. And she came running and screaming towards the vehicle. She's still a little bit concerned of the vehicles. Look, look at the ears and, and the trunk sniffing us.
scratching here of the trunk. The baby elephant I'm trying to greet uh, this young elephant cow. A small trunk and couldn't reach the mouth of the uh, um, young elephant. So the big mama is telling them that it's time to move on now. So they are slowly moving in the southerly direction, so we might catch up with them again this afternoon. I must say a very, very big thank you to the Kudu call that helped us to locate the elephants. Curiosity and in, and inquisitiveness of uh, animal is a symptom of a movement of something. So if you are around and you see that the kudu or any any animal just um, looking and in one direction and now that there might be a, something moving through. So it's, it's, it is worthwhile to go investigate.
Gallery Dam apparently. Joanne wants to know if uh, that female elephant is injury on, on her forehead. No, Joanne. I didn't see any injury or a scar on that uh, female elephant. All of them are fine, they're looking good. No wounds, no cuts. We do catch up with them again this afternoon and I'll take a good look at them. Good morning everyone, this is Craig in Final Control. And uh, just to let you know, we seem to have a problem from the gun that we haven't seen before. So I've just got to shut it down, I'm going to bring it back to camp and have a look at what's going on. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to end the drive there. So you can join us for the PM Safari at 3.30 Central African time with Patrick and Sebastian. So uh, enjoy Jumma Wardall's stream, and uh, we'll see you again later.